Welcome to FCRB TV. It's been a while. Um, this is kind of like a, a special edition because uh, I was told by birthday boy, my buddy Gene, to uh, get back on it and uh, talk about the Arsenal and World Footy because I've taken some time off because I've been, quite frankly, bored with it all. Um, last time that I was here, we are going on the international break. Also, they just beaten Milan. Um, they had just beaten Milan. They were set to play, uh, who was it? Uh, Stoke. Was it Stoke? Yes, it was Stoke. They were getting ready to play Stoke. Uh, they had, they, they had just drawn CSK in Moscow, getting ready for the first leg with that. And I'm going to zoom through all of them, taking back in time, getting caught up to speed if you missed it as well, or just didn't want to talk about it as I didn't want to talk about it. Um, we had the international break, and before we get back to the Arsenal, the international break came and went. There were some friendlies, you know, uh, Brazil beat Germany 1-0, they beat Russia 3-0, and, uh, you know, people are saying that all, it was, like, gr uh, great results for Brazil, but that Germany-Brazil game, um, there were players missing from both sides, um, but Germany really had a lot of the play. You know, Brazil kind of, like, you know, counterpunched and uh, got their goal, and I think that... Um, uh, Trap was in goal, and Trap, you know, not necessarily a howler, but um, either Tristangen or Manuel Neuer would have saved it, saved saved the goal that was scored to give the game to the Celica one nil. Um, Argentina, they uh, they got they got battered by um, Spain six one. Messi did not play. Um, who else did they play? They played somebody else as well. I forgot. You know what I mean? It was just you know friendlies for guys who need the opportunity to try to impress the manager. Get some match fitness because they're not playing at their clubs. Um, Portugal, they, they, I think they lost to the Netherlands 3-0, but then they beat somebody before that. Um, but again, you know, some of my friends, you know, they went on the, um, they went on the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the Messi versus Ronaldo debate. And obviously, I'm going to continue on with that because we're going to get back into club action, and we all saw what happened during the club action of Champions League. But, uh, so yeah, the international break came and went, you know, there were some games played, whatever, no big deal. Um, and, uh, so yeah, that was it, you know, um, it wasn't really anything important, anything special happening. You know, people were kind of, you know, criticizing Messi because he went to the national team, but did not play in either of those two friendlies. He saved himself for La Liga, bro. Those games were irrelevant to, in terms of. Messi and Argentina. We know what Argentina need him, and he he wasn't gonna waste you know hurt himself or exert himself uh, for some a couple of friendlies you know so let that go. And Portugal lost the Netherlands. Who cares? Ronaldo played, but they played a mixed squad, and there were there were a lot of guys missing in that game as well for 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 uh, for Portugal. So no big deal, dude. Let it go. So you know you get back to uh, club footy, um, and uh, what was it? Um, Arsenal, they they took on Stoke and they ended up beating them three nil. That that first half of that game was absolutely dreadful. And you can just see that it's a team of players that they're not they they can't play for the league. There's nothing really to play for. They don't even want to play to try to catch Chelsea or you know try to jostle for European uh, European spots. Stoke is just not a good side. Um, so it was, it was, it was, it was, it was dreadful for a bit. And then, you know, it came to life a little bit. The penalty was a little dodgy, but I could see why it was given. And, uh, you know, Aubameyang scored the first one. Then he scores off a corner again. And then Lacazette came on. He and Mkhitaryan came on and, uh, turned it up a little bit and, uh, got the third as well. And, uh, it was another penalty. Um, again, it was a little soft. It was a foolish push by the defender there. Um, so we beat them 3-0, then we go into midweek and we played CSK in Moscow, and watching that game, it just goes to show you how big of a drop-off it is from the Champions League down to the Europa League, because Arsenal have beaten Ostersund, Milan, and just battered CSK in Moscow 4-1 in the first leg, and we struggle in the Premier League. And we look like world beaters in Euro Europa League. I hope we can, can, can continue on and we get to a final and play Atletico in the final. That would be a nice final to have. 
Uh, but I know the semifinal is going to be tough because if we get either Red Bull, Leipzig, or um, who else is there? Lazio is a uh, 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 possible opponent as well. Um, just trying to avoid Atletico. Um, but yeah, I uh, I tell you, um, it's just the game wasn't sweet because CSK were so slow. Gave us so much space. Anybody who has an idea of playing football, if you give them time and space, they're going to be awesome. So, if you do that for Arsenal, sure, you're going to be great. And it's like, it's as if CSK did not do any, you know, scouting or watching any video. If they just watched the second leg, I mean, the, the last round, both home and away against Milan. Milan gave us too much space in the first leg. Uh, second half, they try to change it. Second leg, they try to change it a bit. But the moral of the story is don't give Arsenal time and space. Um, they gave us time and space. We got Ramsey running around scoring awesome goals. So, I mean, it's good for the Arsenal. I'm happy that we we, we slaughtered them, but they're not really good, man. They're, uh, they're not really good, you know. Um, so, um, we, we should get through the second leg when we go to Moscow, take care of business. We come back yesterday and we played uh, Southampton and everybody is looking at Mustafi like, how are you going to try and blame Peter Cech for that first goal, Schnittgrad? How are you going to blame him for that first goal? You were standing on your, flat, on your flats, Shane Long nipped in and, 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 and tucked it. You were supposed to clear that ball out, bro. And everybody was looking at Mustafi like, yo, are you serious? So, again, that was another game where the Arsenal, they, they really didn't feel like they needed to play. Um, Danny Welbeck all of a sudden wanted to uh, show us what he's, he's, uh, what, what he's supposed to have been doing for the longest time. But I don't think he has that in his locker every, every, every weekend. I think that he was quite fortuitous. Because, I mean, look again, the first goal he scored, it was a deflection. Great run. I didn't think he, he had the ability to, to dart inside like that and get a shot off. That was brilliant. The, the deflection, he earned the deflection, gets a goal. Wonderful. Then, when the game is 2-2, two, two, uh, we get a little combination, cross back post. Jack does well to knock it across. And my man is four yards away from the goal, and he just he just just muffs it and kicks it out of bounds for a goal kick off to the, off to the, the, the left-hand side of the post. Um, then he comes back and scores a header. And uh, I just think that he, he what he is is, if I was Danny Welbeck, and, I, and I've already stated before I'm better than Danny Welbeck. If I was Danny Welbeck, I would say, listen, I'm lucky to be at Arsenal. I was lucky to be at United. I'm going to be an awesome squad player for these people. And then if I can get my game up, maybe then I can challenge and push the other strikers who are ahead of me. But I'm going to work my socks off. And when they call my number, when we play these lesser games, I'm going to be a menace. But he doesn't do that enough. His ego's huge. When I say it's just all these guys' egos are huge. They think they're better than they really are. And then they come out here and then they do rubbish. So I was not, I'm taking those two goals with a grain of salt. I do give him credit that he, he took those two goals to propel us to the victory. But that's his job. He should be doing that regularly. And he doesn't. So that's that. Um, so that's good. You know, Chelsea drew with West Ham. So. Uh, they're only three points ahead of us, so we can kind of like nip in and take that off them. That'd be great. I uh, I I would like that, but I don't know with the mindset of the uh, the uh, the the uh, the squad. You know, they might they they're all focused on the Europa League, so you know they don't want to have insurance in the in their back pocket of of nipping nipping in front of Chelsea and getting uh, the fifth spot, so that we have guaranteed European football. Because Arsenal is a big club where you need. You need to have uh, international matches to play throughout the season. You, you just you just can't not have it. You know what I mean. So uh, it, it would be nice if we could catch Chelsea and take five off them. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, so that's where we were. But you know, now I'm gonna uh, direct my attention to MLS, and obviously Zlatan has arrived, and he gave us Zlatan. In the derby against LAFC, but what I would say about that is, I mean, we we've all known that Zlatan has technique. He's able to take take half a chance and make it something special. Uh, I think he would do well in the league because he has that quality that the league does not have that can stop him. Like 
you know, so he will have more moments like that, um, even though he didn't have it last night against Kansas City, but that's all right. He didn't even start the game. Um, Kansas City's tough. But um, I was going to say that, like, at 3-0, LAFC has Bob Bradley as manager. International experience. Felt he got hosed at Swansea. He has done well in the Norwegian League, was it? Yes. Then he went to the French second division and almost got promotion. He's got experience, yeah? Mate, how do you not kill the game at 3-0 in the derby? 3-0. And you let them come all the way back? The game was too open, Bob. Why? Why would you let that happen? Why would you allow Zlatan to come in here and just show you up like that? For me, that surrendering a three-goal lead in the last, like, 15 minutes, that's unacceptable, mate. And we're not even going to go talk about what happened in Atlanta this week. We're not even... Well, we kind of are because something happened in that game that just had me just fuming. So, so it was a lot of time did his thing in that game. As I said, they played Kansas City last night, and Peter Vermees don't play that game, and they came up in there and played some D, shut it down, and... Uh, you know, they beat L.A. in L.A. 2-0. You know, don't, Kansas City don't play that game. They're tough. So, uh, so that happened, yeah. So the talking point in MLS, aside from Zlatan, Zlatan's arrival, is um, first of all, um, my former club, New England Revolution, hosted uh, a club that I would have loved to have played for, and uh, I'm, I have an affinity for them, is a Montreal Impact. Montreal Impact? C'est fantastique, you know? Um, they have uh, Ignacio Piatti, fantastic player, you know. Um, so they played them down at Gillette, and about 12 minutes in, um, uh, I think Safir Tede, the, uh, the the new uh, DP that they got, he uh, got into a little uh, collision with one of the New England players and got sent off. Now, if any of you saw it, for me, that's not even a yellow card. Because what, if you, first of all, I think that as a referee, you have to do your homework on like all the players that you're going to come up, uh, come up, you know, in the matches. In terms of, you have to know the clubs, you have to know the players. So that means you're watching games. You should know these things and know who is who in the team and, and, and just understand what you're walking into. You just can't walk in blind. They walk in blind. Tay Dare is a 50 50 and he tries to, to uh, to to shield the ball from the unrushing New England uh, defender, midfielder, whatever. And uh, he runs, and he puts his right foot on top of the ball, and he wants to shield it with his body. And so now after he's put his right foot on top of the ball, he takes his foot off because he wants to land, and then he uses his left foot to pull it away, kind of like a little Maradona, yeah? So, But when he does that, when he takes his foot off the ball to put it down, he hits the, the, the New England guy in the shin. And the guy obviously screams and falls to the ground. Oh, you know, and then everybody runs over there. All the New England guys go, like, oh, uh, referee, open your eyes, ref. All that nonsense, right? So then the referee doesn't know anything that's going on right now. He just knows a whole bunch of big dudes yelling at him. So what does he do? Reaches his back pocket and gives Tay Dare a red card. Come on, man. That was not a red card, not even a yellow. I've got guys on Facebook arguing with me, telling me, uh, he almost broke his leg. I'm like, dude, you don't even play football. So why would you even know when somebody's trying to break your leg or not? If Tadell was trying to break his leg, he would have broke his leg, dude. His leg was right there to get it snapped. But he wasn't trying to. He just tried to put his foot down. It was a foul. That's it. A foul, bro. So all you need to do is, you know what? Freaking... Call the foul, but like, oh, if I'm the referee, I'm running over there, run over there, and I'll tell all those New England guys who are running at me, like, hey, back up. I got this, all right? I'll be like, hey, there, come here. Listen, you have to be careful now. It's 12 minutes into the game. I don't want to have to do anything like that to ruin the game, you understand? So next time, please, be careful, okay? It's going to be a foul, indirect free kick for New England. Let's go. Play. End of story. End of story, man. Instead, this referee was looking around. Then he was like, man, and where am I, Foxborough? Gillette, the big razor, red card. Come on, ruin the game. New England won four nothing, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it was a red card." No, it wasn't. Nope, 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 nope. Then the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, Atlanta. 
First of all, Atlanta's hosting LA, and I like LAFC because they got my man Carlos V. He's like a superhero. And uh, they've got some players over there. That guy, Rossi, he's nice. And um, who else is in Memphis? Oh, they got they got Benny Philhyber. We're going to talk about Benny in a minute. They, so they got a nice little squad over there at uh, at the LAFC. And they, everybody knows Atlanta is the, the, the real squad. L.A. and New York City, those are squads you need to watch, okay? So um, did I say L.A.? Atlanta. Atlanta and New York City, squads to watch, and LAFC. Um, so first of all, MLS messed up because... I believe, I believe the home kit for LAFC is all white. So when they came to play Atlanta, Atlanta should have worn the five stripes. The red and black, black, black. That's what they should have worn. So it should have been Atlanta at home, red and black, 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 and then, and then LAFC all white. But instead, they had at, at Atlanta wearing all white, all white with their little peach on it. And then LAFC was wearing all black. I mean, come on. A- Atlanta's at home. Create a dynasty. Create some history, some continuity. Every time we turn the, ga- the game on, we shouldn't have to ask where the game's being played because Atlanta's wearing the red and black, baby. FC red and blacks. Holla. Anyway, so they don't have the right kits on, so I'm kind of upset about that. But I'm like, you know what? I know Martinez is playing. I know Carlos V is playing. It's about to be lit. Let's go. So... Two minutes into the game, the right back for L.A. I hope you guys saw this game, okay? As you can see, I watch a lot of footy. The right back played a hospital ball. He stitched him up. He stitched up Ben Philhaber. He rolls the, rolls the ball 7, 10 yards in front of Ben when Ben's wide open in the middle of midfield, playing my feet, doesn't do it. Rolls it 10 yards in front. So Benny's trying to go track it down. The, the center back from Atlanta, um, uh, I don't know what his name is, Kane, Khan, something like that. My man came in, boom, hit the ball. Now, when he hit the ball, he's going straight through. He knocks the ball. He might have shown studs a little, but, I mean, it's kind of hard to slide without your studs showing at all, right? So he slides, and he gets the ball, and his legs are straight through. Benny's not even there yet. Benny's trying to get the ball, and Benny kind of, like, flipped over him. They gave this man a straight red card, straight red card. And and like the thing is, you could you could you could see the LA the LA FC guys ran over to the ref again, and one guy goes, I think the guy uh, K in midfield, he goes two two yeah both studs, or showing your studs. It's like no, he didn't. He won the ball. You should have been yelling at your right back for stitching up Benny because that was a terrible ball. Benny should have pulled the Valderrama or something and not even run for it. Like nope, I'm not going for that because you're trying to get me killed. Not doing it. So he goes over there. The guy, the guy crunches him, and now he gets a red card, right? So now two minutes into the game, what I've been waiting for all weekend in terms of MLS footy is a red card for Atlanta. So now they're going to be down a man for 88 minutes. So, But, of course, they go to VAR. They go to VAR. Stupid VAR. They go to that, and then this clown referee comes back and does his thing, right, and then says, come on back on the field. It's only a yellow. So now Atlanta's uh, 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 LAFC is pissed because now they don't have a man advantage and they know they're about to get worked because they're like, yo, Atlanta's got all their dudes now? Damn. Um, so for me, the big t- the game ended 5-0 to, to Atlanta. Um, for me, VAR is so useless because if you watch the MLS games and now they're trying to use it as that's the benchmark how you're supposed to use VAR, as a referee... It, they should take it as an insult because you're looking like a clown every time now you have to go to that thing and 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 retract your initial decision. That means you were incompetent in the first place. You miss you're mi- they're missing calls that they should get without having instant replay. Instant replay. What are they watching? That was the if you when I'm watching the game, I'm like, oh, that's not a red card. And all of a sudden, we have this whole ordeal. My man has to walk off the field, go stand on underneath the awning, going into the tunnel. Then they have to wave him back on because they made a mistake. And oh, we're gonna talk about Orlando City and Portland as well. So again, it was never a foul. It was never a foul. Never. How do you go from not? It being a foul to a red card, a straight red, two minutes into the game. What are these referees looking at? I'm telling you, these referees in the MLS, I'm sorry. 
but they are no good. And can you believe America has more referees at the upcoming World Cup than England? England have none. What? I mean, look, we watch Prem every weekend. Yeah, they make some bad calls. Yeah, okay, that's part of the game. But they're still all better than the referees we have in America. Are you serious? I mean, Mike Dean is better than all the refs in America, and we all know about Mike Dean. Mike Dean's terrible. But I, I would rather play in a game. I'd rather coach in a game, play in a game with Mike Dean refing than any of the referees in America. Dudes are terrible. They don't know anything. It's a joke. Yeah, I'm a little hot right now because I'm just I'm envisioning all these horrific calls in my head, and I'm like, how are they making these mistakes? So you have the incident in, in New England, you have the incident in 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 Atlanta, and now we're gonna now I'm gonna take it to Orlando, because now we've got Portland Timbers playing Orlando City, right? So they're playing. I like this. I like the whole setup. Orlando's got the all purple. Uh, Portland came in their away all white. Feeling it. It's dope. So now uh, Blanco, the one of the new DPs, uh, he's he's second year DP over there at uh, Portland. They have a nice, nice little combination, right? And mind you, he's already on the yellow. He's already on the yellow. I don't know how he's already on the yellow. Um, but uh, my man, uh, they play a, they play a nice little ball to him. And he's 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 just 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 beyond the penalty spot coming into the box. So he's about like 14 yards away from the goal. He gets it, he gets his touch, and this guy, I don't even know who he is, sir Orlando, comes lunging in in the box. Not like a, a lunge toe poke. My man left his feet. Left his feet. He's he's flying right now. And he just clatters into Blanco. Right? I'm sitting there like, oh, that's that's a pen. That's all day, pen. Referee looks over, turns the corner, looking around a couple of guys' bodies, pulls out a second yellow, give a red card to Blanco. Said he dove. What? Said he said he was a simulation. Are you serious? What are you looking at, fam? What are you talking about? Dive? What? Oh, my God. I hope you people saw this game. So then, of course, he went to VAR. He went to VAR, right? Went to VAR, and what, what did he find out? That he's stupid. That he he doesn't need to be reffing. Oh, he's not done yet. He's not done yet. So, so they now they call Blanco back on the field because you don't have the yellow anymore, so therefore you don't have a red. You're still on the yellow. V v Valeri scores the pen. They're up 1-0. Then they, they, uh, they score again. They're up 2-0. Now, the 79th minute, Orlando has a corner. They whip it in. Guy scores 2-1. Yeah? Okay, so now, you know, there's 10 minutes to go plus injury time, 2-1. You know, the uh, the crowd's getting into it. They let their little uh, confetti go and the, the, purple, the purple smoke is going. Yeah, the Lions are coming. Yeah. So now the ball goes wide. They whip a ball in the box. The, they whip a ball in the box, right? And Dom Dwyer is back post. Now, if you people saw this, you know what I'm going to say. He's back post. The cross is over. Said Dom is probably what five foot three. He mad little. The cross is over. Said he's not going to get it. Shoulder to shoulder with the center back from Portland. He falls down. This was almost, almost as bad as Luis Suarez's dive against PSG last year in the Champions League second leg. Falls down on the ground. This referee gives a penalty. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Never was it a pen. Never. If anybody should get a yellow card for simulation, it should have been Dom Dwyer. But it's not done yet, man. So then they give the penalty. This, it's like the 84th, 85th minute penalty. Uh, Sasha Kletchen scores. Boom. 2-2. Two, two. Now all the momentum is with, uh, with, with, with uh, Orlando. And then wouldn't you know it, Dom Dwyer scores the winner. 3-2. That's all the referee, man. That's all the ref. There was no penalty there. No pen. And I'm upset about it because these three instances that I've seen here with the VAR and the poor officiating in MLS, it's like it, it, the game can't grow properly because now you've got fans who are, are learning the game through MLS, not, not fans who have been watching Europe and watching Champions League and, and, and international football. 
Now they're learning the game through MLS's eyes, and now they they're being told what what is a foul, what not as a foul incorrectly. You know, you're gonna create a a, a soft environment where every little touch it's a contact sport, you know, and every single touch is gonna be a foul now. You know, guys are flopping on the ground. And I thought that they said that if you run to the referee and start yelling, asking for cards, you're going to get booked for that. In every situation that I talked about, in at, in New England, in Atlanta, and in Orlando, all the teams who saw a, a, a numerical advantage by getting somebody sent off, ran to the referee, the referee never spoke to any of them. So what are we doing, refs? I think the problem, first of all, VAR is absolutely nonsense. Not needed whatsoever. Not needed whatsoever. It's ruining our game. That's what it is. This 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 talk here has all of a sudden been about VAR. Because it's ruining this beautiful game that I love so much. That so many of us love. I cannot stand it. It's what it is. It's a snitch. It's a snitch on the game. You can't get everything right. It slows the game down. And then they can't even use it right. Because the people who are in charge of VAR don't even know the rules. They don't know the rules. They didn't. They, ne- they didn't play enough to to understand what a player is trying to get accomplished. It is terrible. I tell you, terrible. So those three games were altered by the referee. Altered. It's so bad. You know how are you going to? How did you not see firsthand that the guy wasn't diving? That he was fouled. That the guy the guy lunged in. Everybody knows that when you're in the box as a defender. You cannot just d- jump in with tackles. You have to be very careful. Do you not see Sergio Ramos? Do you not see Piquet? You have to be careful when you're in the box. You put your your hands behind your back. Make sure there's nothing going to no, no cross hit your hands. And if you're going to put your foot in, you have to be careful. These guys in MLS, they just lunge in. Woo! Diving in. Woo! Sliding. Even in that, even in the Atlanta L- LAFC game, that kid Zimmerman that plays in the back for, for Atlanta. No, for LA, right? He just dove in on Almiron. Dove in. Of course it's a penalty. You can't do that. You have to stand him up. Move your feet. Don't let him in behind. But if you dive in, good players will get in behind you. And either they will get in behind and score, assist, or get the penalty. And that's what uh, that's what Miggy did to him. Why are you diving in in the box? If you're going to dive in, you better dive in before the guy gets near the box. So that if you foul him, it's outside the box. Who doesn't know this? Well, the guy, the guy at Orlando just jumped in. Woo! I mean, it was like a slip and slide. Terrible. So that's that's what it is, and um, that's my update of where um where I left off. Oh, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't leave you yet because all the Ronaldo fans are like, yo, I ain't gonna talk about that bike though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My man scored, your man, yeah, my man, your man. Your man scored twice against Juve. They won the game 3-0. He's on form right now. He's, he's on fire. Ronaldo is a goal scorer. He's a machine. He's a terminator in the box. Keyword: the box. Yeah? So he's a terminator. He scores goals, no doubt about it. So now, you know, we'll, 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 we'll end this segment with the, the whole Messi versus Ronaldo debate. Um, so he's scoring a lot of goals. That's what he does. You know, he, he's very opportunistic in the box. He knows how to create space in the box to get his headers or his, his touches on. And the bike was phenomenal. But, you know, like the, like the, uh, reporter asked Diego Simeone ahead of the, uh, uh, the Madrid derby that was, uh, yesterday. They said, was that the best goal you've ever seen? He's like, mate, come on, man. Say, I'm Diego Simeone. I've seen football. He said, have you seen Enzo Francescoli's goal in the Copa Libertadores? He said, go and see that goal and then come back and talk to me and then we'll talk about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I've seen a lot of good goals too, man. Don't forget, Rivaldo scored bikes too. Rivaldo scored bikes at Barca. Ronaldinho scored bikes at Barca. I mean, Ronaldo scored a good goal. Okay. But all these, you know... Uh, Ronaldo fans, the fanboys, they just go mad for the guy. I was getting calls, text messages. Oh, I thought you said Ronaldo doesn't uh, show up at the big games. Like, all right, all right, all right, all right. He did it. Yeah, all right, cool. That's fine. Yeah, great. But he's still not better than Lionel Messi, though. He's still not. Because Ronaldo is a predator in the box. Messi 
controls the whole game. The whole pitch, dog. Did you see it? For you 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 know what? You know what else is impressive? You know what else is impressive is um Ronaldo scored two goals they, and he got an assist. Two goals and assist, they beat Juve 3 0. Fantastic result. Great play from Ronaldo. Messi is such a menace that he had De Rossi score a goal for him. Did you see that? Off the combination, he got in the box. De Rossi was so worried about Messi, he said, I just put it in for you. Knocked it in. Did y'all see that? That's when a man is controlling everybody. But we can continue that on later on. Um, we've got Champions League games tomorrow. Maybe I'll be back. Maybe I won't. I'll probably be back after Arsenal knockout CSK in Moscow. All right? So, Gina, this one was for you, bro. You got me back. Uh, this one for you. All right, fam? So, uh, happy birthday, bro. Hope you had some cake. Eat, 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 eat some cake, man, because I'm vegan. I can't have cake anymore. Not not with, with, with all the dairy and you know, all that sugar and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Eat that good cake. <laughs> and I will talk to you later. If you enjoyed this, the footy talk, leave your comments below. Subscribe, FCRB TV. Ciao.